Hi, I'm Crystal Hart. Welcome to the Crystal Hart Show. We are at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery in Chelsea, and this is a royal celebration. It is, what, 20 years? 20 years. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is proud to celebrate our 20th anniversary in Chelsea as a renowned art gallery. And we are honored to have the one, the only, the super sensation, Miss Crystal Hart here to film our Chelsea Biennale exhibit. We are thrilled to feature the best of art in Chelsea, figurative, landscape, floral, abstract, sculpture, and Crystal Hart is shining the spotlight on our fabulous artists. Our artists are international as well as national. Crystal, they're from Texas, they're from Wisconsin, they're from California, they're from the South, and then of course we have our international artists from Asia, from Europe, from Germany, from Norway. And Crystal is magnificent because she always is wanting to highlight the best that Chelsea has to offer. So Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is celebrating our 20th anniversary in Chelsea, the Chelsea Biennale, and we are celebrating our friendship with our beloved and our beautiful singular sensation, the Queen of Chelsea, Crystal Hart. We love you, God bless. Here we have Mr. John Peters, one of our wonderful, known as the Gold Master from uh, uh, Michigan and from the Northeast. And John is featuring beautiful paintings that are behind us. They're celestial, they're golden, they uh, envelop the landscape, and John honors the topography of the world. And I know that you'll enjoy talking to John Peters, Crystal. Thank you. John, come up here. Come over here. <laughs> he was right on time. What an, what an entrance. Here, come, come on in here, John. How are you, Crystal? Oh, good. All the way from Detroit, Michigan. You bet. And it's good to be out of COVID. <laughs> that is great. Now tell me all your work behind here. Let's, let's go through it a little bit. Well, as you know, I've always been strong on color and form, and I'm working more with gold. I love what gold does with light. The image changes as the light changes. So I have fun, and I hope people like my work. Uh, obviously, these are uh, two paintings with trees. One is all oil. The one on the right is oil and gold and silver leaf. Uh, silver leaf is new for me because silver leaf is hard to work with because it oxidizes. And you have to treat it so it retains its silver look and doesn't turn black. But I love trees and I love mountains. So what I do in my work where I can is I marry the trees to the mountains. As in the piece on the left. And the uh, piece in the middle is obviously a sun. Uh, I, uh, it gives me a good opportunity to use gold because that's the sun. And as the light hits it, the various sprinkles or eruptions from the surface of the sun end up looking like sparks. And it creates a dynamic look against a dark, dark blue background. Dark blue of space, not black, but dark blue. This is another one of the uh, New England pictures that I've done, again, with the white birches, the stone walls that are typical of New England fields. Uh, back in the day, in the early years, New Hampshire was 90% trees cut, farming everywhere, and they grew as many rocks as they grew plants, and that's where the rock walls came from, because every spring, the freeze-thaw cycles would move the rocks up from under the ground, the farmers would have to pick them up to plow their fields, and as they picked them up, they made walls. The last piece is a, uh, an evening silhouette with snow, and uh, it's a moon. Uh, that is, again, uh, silver, uh, silver leaf on the moon, and it's uh, coated uh, to uh, prevent oxidation and hopefully uh, it'll uh, for many years provide uh, interest and comfort. It's a mood type of piece. 
All the way from California, we have Lori Mole, and her work is behind me, very, very colorful. And there's also something very special about Lori's work. She always places a heart in her designs. <laughs> yes, sometimes they just happen, and if that's the case, I leave them. But sometimes I add them back in because I love to paint. <laughs> Now tell me about this exhibit. Um, I've been doing a music series for um, 30 years now. And um, I started playing piano, clarinet, flute, but then um, now I paint music. I've been, um, I love concerts, everybody loves the music and so it comes through my work. Um, they're very graphic too, my background is in graphic design and um, they are getting more and more colorful, which is nice. Um, a lot of scenes from restaurants. This one's actually from a restaurant in Santa Rosa, California. And um, so they're just from my sketchbooks, different ideas and they come together and it's really fun to see what's gonna happen next. The saxophone painting is called Love That Sound. My mom used to play <laughs> the saxophone. So, you know, everybody has a favorite instrument, and you can really just hear that sound when you're at a restaurant. Um, the one next to it has the chair, and it's called Dog Walker. It has a pair of tennis shoes, the dog leash, Central Park to walk your dog. Um, and you can see maybe the hidden heart a little better in that one on the, on the bass. Um, the... The trumpet on the chair is called um, Taking a Break. Of course, it has that lovely <laughs> blue martini in it. And um, this was a sketch I did from the Alabama Museum of Jazz. And um, so much later, it comes through in my paintings. Um, the one on top is called Check This. And it is from a sketch I did of how I wanted to um, redo our shed um, in the backyard, put in a little wine bistro, and the one below it is called the Villa, and it has the piano, the sheet music, the sh all the sheet music in it I hand draw in with a uh, pen and ink, and the paintings are all in acrylic. Um, the one next to that is called She Rocks, and um, I don't typically paint figures, but I've been wanting to paint the Statue of Liberty for a long time. Just seemed like she needed a guitar. <laughs> and then the one next to that is called How Sweet It Is. Um, I did a sketch of this in the year 2000. Um, the restaurant here in New York is where I did the sketch, and I actually met Dr. Ruth there. She was there for a wedding. And uh, my cousin and I went to lunch there yesterday. So that's the logo from the restaurant, the little people. And then there's five hearts in that painting. Um, two are in the wine. And of course the red velvet cupcakes. Um, and a friend of mine has a harmonica collection, so sometimes his harmonicas end up in my work. So there you have it, folks, Miss Lori Mole, all the way from California. It is so great to see you again. Oh, thank you so much, Crystal. It's a wonderful to be back. With us is Thomas Lockhart here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. I love, I love that place. Thank you, thank you so much. I had to come show out, you know, show out for the artist and uh, for... Uh, this wonderful celebration, so, yeah, absolutely. Well, your work is so amazing yes. behind me. But first, uh, t tell me first, what, what's your inspiration? Um, my inspiration is life. You know, it's many different things that deals with, uh, I get my inspiration from conversations, I get it from music, I get it from things that are happening in society. And then art, I do a lot of research with my work, too, as well. So art is a historical fact as well and it creates and it leaves something for the next generation so I look at art as all a part of our lives so those are really my inspiration and I want people to be inspired by the work as I do it and to help them continue to keep developing in life. This particular piece is called The Hunt and I did this piece on a a circle canvas which this gentleman he is like a male peacock and between the male and the female peacocks, the male has the most colors. And so 
the male peacock will open up his feathers when he's in looking for a mate and to show her what he has to offer. I think maybe to the relationship or whatever, the courting or the mating of the peacocks. So he's showing, these are my colors and this is who I am. And these gold bars that are within his chest represent what he has to offer to the relationship. Lover, protector, hunter, victorious, meaningful life, and courageous. So he's showing his mate or his uh, possible mate, these are the things that I'm bringing as who I am as a person to the relationship. And it's called the hunt because he's hunting, you know, for whoever this may be. This particular piece is called A Sure Foundation, which she is standing on the rocks. In the background, you have the sea and uh, the very colorful sky that's attached to her. Um, there's a lot of mixed media that I have built into her dress, and her hair uh, has a similar theme as his hair, too, as well. And so she's confident of who she is, and she's kind of showing and standing in all her glory um, on this firm foundation. And the bottom is dripping in excellence, is the theme of that particular piece. This particular piece is called uh, The Jeweler. And she is a, it's a fictitious uh, um, story, but she's traveled. She's a world traveler. She travels all over the world, and she's looking to find out her and about who she is. And then she finds out at the end that she's the priceless one. And so that, and hence having the jeweler. So having all this jewelry and unrepresentation and understanding that she's the one who is the priceless one past what the jewelry is in representation as well. Yeah. And this, this last one is one of my newest pieces from my Women Empowerment series. And this one is called Love is a Beauty. Each one ends with the word beauty. And then her name is Love. So the flowers represent um, her crown beauty, her strength, her courage, her fragrance, and all these wonderful things that embodies what a woman is. And so I use a lot of uh, floral pieces to kind of pop uh, with the imagery to kind of bring it together a little bit more uh, along with the pearl necklace and the uh, handmade collage paper at the bottom. So love is a beauty of who she is and she's put from my Women Empowerment series. But with us once again, Thomas Lockhart, yes. Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. What's next? What's next? Um, I will be heading to uh, Spectrum in Miami down in Art Basel. Okay. Yeah, it's coming up. Here, well, so. good luck there. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful work. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, we have beautiful florals behind me, and next to me is somebody just as beautiful, Eugene Mastavi. Did I say that? Yes, <laughs> correct. And where are you nice from originally? Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Yes. Yes? And, and, and now tell me a little bit about your artwork. Your oh, artwork. so my artwork is I was a big professional designer and then um, I had a long time in the collections working but I had a college um, degree of interior and architecture as well. But after like a couple of years ago, I was like kind of a little get bored and the COVID virus. I moved to, you know, Hudson Valley and spending a lot of time with the nature. Um, but it's too much greens in there and I needed something like um, surrounding me, you know, like um, my actual presence more surrounding as well as like a fashion, my sensibility. So it's showing like a trend and pattern and colors, like a strong something in my, you know, and visually hang my room. So that's why I turned to my studying page. And, and this room is called the nature room. Yeah. And it's wonderful nature, wonderful so nature. So oh, the flower of uh, the plants like more, I started a painting for the flower, a decided flower. And then after that, I think about what's gonna best matching with the flower colors and pattern. So I draw a base and then I draw a background. So first always comes a flower and then get base and the background and see what composition are the best way. So I don't decide for the sketches. So I decided later and later and later after, you know, flower and base and background and then, you know. That's interesting. Oh, Thank this you. is beautiful. 
the pinks. Thank you so much. Thank Tell you. me a little about this one. So this is like I was thinking about like Merry Christmas, something candy, you know, like uh, something um, pink, like a uh, fun, kind of happy, you know, like and then I want to show something like a uh, different color. Um, it show kind of more people make the uh, tense more, you know, more make exciting, more better. That flower, I want to show the flower. It looks like a more like a fabric, so kind of like a very, very soft to feel like a soft to silky flower looks. But behind the head, very, very strong matte, um, you know, marble in there. So kind of looks like very different um, texture. Can show the, just a piece of a pa piece of a paper using different two different, you know, contrast in there. This is my favorite as well. I love the color composition in there and the flower kind of, I want to show the really, really white, kind of a little bit shiny. You can really see it right there, but if you see with the light there, it's shiny. So it kind of like makes a soft, shiny flower with very strong, you know, structures, colors, makes it together go well. So that's why I did. Like something I was thinking about just the blue, bluish and tacos, you know, the greens, something like that. And then kind of that's exactly I have a furniture in my around my home. So the color makes me very comfortable with me. And then yeah, so I just wanted it's a great matching actually my living room. So <laughs> this is a prodigy. Say it no I okay, say it for me. A Prajata. <laughs> okay. And, and, and where are you from? I am originally from India, but now I live in New Jersey. And I'm so glad to be here. Well, behind me is all this work on nature, and this is the nature room. So, so tell me about your work. Uh, I, I'm somebody who's a nature lover from heart, and I enjoy painting nature. And I feel that nature has the healing power and so does the art so i want to pass on the happiness that i get from being in nature and painting nature to the people who are looking at my art so i say that art that brings happiness is what i create this painting is called going with the flow and i take a lot of pictures when i'm out so this is from one of the hikes that i did in new jersey it is from shuli mountain I took the picture and I decided to come home and paint that. This painting depicts the fall colors. The way I've curated this exhibition is I've tried to showcase different seasons and the way nature brings a beautiful color palette to us. That one has, this next one has a beautiful light coming in. So this is another watercolor painting, one of my favorites, and has been showcased in another two, three exhibitions too. This painting is called Breaking Through. And you can see the light breaking through the dense forest. The whole idea is that even in, in the thick, thick, thickness of the tough situations, the bad situations, there's always a light behind that we can follow and you know still find positivity. This painting is my clear depiction of the winter. Winter is white and gloomy, but yet so beautiful. It brings a lot of sense of realization in terms of how things can become monotone and the spring makes all of this beautiful and colorful. This painting is again a watercolor and is called Winter Glee. This painting is called Spring Blooms. This is another watercolor. It's all impressionist way of me depicting spring on my, on my paper. It has all the beautiful colors of the spring and has so much. If you go through the details of this painting, every time you look at this painting, you'll find a new element. The technique that I use to create this painting is called negative painting. And the people who know watercolor paintings would know how easy or complex that technique is. But I love the outcome. Thank you. Artist Frank Heffler with us. Wonderful work behind me. Now, 
Frank, first of all, tell me your philosophy and what inspires you to paint. Um, everything inspires me to paint. I drive to work and I look at the clouds. I drive to work and see a, a stream. I'm always looking. Everything is impressive to me and I keep those images in my head and then when it's time to paint, I draw from them. So that's where I come from. And, and how long have you been painting? Over 40 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. It's been a while. And, and tell me about this series. Um, this is a different series. I painted, um, these two are still lifes that I had set up in my, still, in my studio. The one behind you is from Arizona. And the one on the left is from Maine. I lived in Maine for several years. And then the one on my left is from um, the Fox River up in Wisconsin. And it's a bunch of photographs that I edited and picked what I wanted to paint. This is a still life that I set up in my studio and I lit myself and it's all from real fruit and real roses and they're all on a oriental carpet. It was inspiring to me to put that together and then to paint it. There's another one I changed the bowl out and um, painted working on the background a lot, working on the roses themselves in order to read really well. And then I wanted the oranges and tangerines to look like you could pick them off the page. So that's as far as I went. And this painting is a, is a combination of uh, several different photographs from the Fox River Valley up in Wisconsin. So I had photographs of the rocks on the shore in one, I had photographs of the landscape behind, I had a photograph of the Fox River, and I decided to put it together to look like this. And I'm happy with it. With this is Lulu Zhang, and this is real special because this painting behind us, well, we have the subject here, am I correct? Yes, you are. She's my little model for this painting. She loves water since a baby. Whenever she's in the water, she smiles, and I want to bring this moment to the audience, have the same feeling of it. And how do you feel about being the subject of, of, of a, a painting that everybody's going to see on television? And it is very nice. I feel very special for it, and it's an amazing painting. I love it. And, and tell me about your swimming. Um, I always liked swimming, although I never did competitive swim. Oh, I, I always did it just for fun. I love swimming also. I swim every day. So tell me about um, now all, all the paintings that you have here. Um, I'm a multimedia artist, and I, but I only show all your painting in uh, this gallery. I've been with uh, Miss Tucker for six years, so uh, most of the painting uh, has uh, underwater scene because I'm a swimmer, and uh, I want to bring this um, uh, feeling to show people how it, uh, how soothing your mind and relax your body. In this show, I focus on night view. So they all um, from the imaging during the night. This painting is called uh, Underwater X-ray. It's uh, uh, come from my background as a medical training and a swimmer. So I want this imaging to give a view people cannot see in their daily life because they, uh, people live with air all the time, but not uh, in the water. So I. I'm a swimmer, I can see the view under it. This one is a uh, um, night scene also, and uh, since the holiday is coming, I want to bring this uh, holiday color to, to the gallery. <laughs> and we end with another great support group, yes, of, uh, <laughs> of artists, uh, artist friends, yes, and family. With this, Irene Van Celestine. Yes, Welcome. that's correct. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> and, and, and tell me a little bit, what inspires you to paint? 
Absolutely. I started painting about two years ago. It was unfortunate um, sequence of events, including COVID being, um, you know, um, ramp rampaging through the world. And I started painting as a way of releasing and therapy for myself. And I cannot stop ever since. I found my new passion in this. This painting is called Black Swan. So what comes to your mind when I say Black Swan? It's a ballet. This female figurative is wearing a dance dress and she's in a very um, powerful pose, jumping up and looking forward, just seeing where she's gonna land next. And those crippled hands are, are reaching from below, trying to stop her from this movement, but she is so powerful that as her wings lose feathers and they go further from her body, they reveal their true color, which is white, because deep inside she is an angel. And as they touch the hands, they destroy them, and so she has nothing to worry about. My wing creatures, my female figurative with wings, is a symbol of power and freedom. This is the next one. This one is called Mother of All Dragons. This one of my few paintings which has a, um, a light background. And this woman is in a very relaxed pose. She's looking up. She's looking where she's gonna fly next. She's gonna take another step and fly into the air. This painting is called playing with fire. We have three figures in here. Two beautiful women in the prehistorical setting warming up around the fire and yet they're being watched by the ominous dragon from inside the cave. It's up to your interpretation. <laughs> and this one is called facing her demon. This woman is holding a small dagger and facing a horrible creature which comes towards her. It's a huge werewolf, but she is not afraid. She is not running away. She is gonna overtake this creature and prove her power and ability to stand for herself. My work is contemporary abstract and mostly I work in alabaster, something called Wonderstone, which is truly wondrous, and uh, a little bit of other things, a um, bit of bronze, a little bit of wood pieces, but stone is my medium and um, I love it, I show well with it. it, it speaks to me. And my work is very much a collaboration between myself and the stone. It's not me imposing me, myself on the stone, it's not the stone telling me, it's me conferring with the stone. Each piece comes out to be totally unique, totally different um, in shape and color and size. This is a piece called Infinity Stone and it's a translucent alabaster, I don't know if you can see it, it's and with, with gold gilding on it and it's, it's a wonderful almost ethereal magical piece that that really gives you a sense of what I can do but also a sense of an opportunity to really have an imagination because I really believe that sculpture is really a lot about the emotion that it brings to you and what it says to you and it's not about how um, you know what I have seen in it it's not about what the stone was but it was just a rough piece of stone. Um, it's all about the emotion that you have. And my experience is the more emotional attachment you have, the more you want to touch it. And it's, it's, it makes you feel good. It makes, brings you energy. Every day when you look at one of my pieces, you see something different. And um, I'm a big believer that you should be able to see something different every single day in, in the piece of work that you own, whether it's a sculpture or whether it's a piece on your wall. 
and that makes it timeless. This piece is orange alabaster, and it, it obviously is in the shape of kind of a leaf, and it's called autumn, which is, um, you know, representational. Again, as I say, my work is representational. I, I, don't, I don't make something that's real. I don't do things that you necessarily would exactly recognize because, again, I'd like to think that people get the opportunity to, to interpret it themselves. And if, you, if you're always told what you're going to do and what you're going to see, And, and another aspect of my pieces is that I, I really, I like to have everything that you can see from both sides. Because um, what you see on one side might be something you like. What you see on the back side, or what I count as a back side, is something totally different. And, and so my wife likes this side. I like the other side. And um, it's not been uncommon for people to show the back as the front and to be you know that's how they present it in their house or in, in a gallery and I'm good with that because I really believe that I should be able to show things in the round. This piece here is called spring and and as you see we've got the lovely translucent alabaster I don't know that the light can you can see that my, my hand but it's got again the gold gilding on it it has a, a a, a glass piece that is representational of spring, and this is spring coming up. But again, it's what you see is what you um, what you interpret, and so I really I really enjoy that. And, and now, also, we have your beautiful wife here, and tell me what you think of his work. Be careful. Well, I am a super fan, so I have no trouble telling you that I think that Tom's work is truly fantastic, world-class, and very unique and beautiful. One of the things I particularly like about Tom's work is that, as he said, it really conveys the warmth and the kindness and the generosity and the energy that is really the sculpture, right? All art does actually communicate the personality and the energy and the emotions of the person who creates it. And you can see from Tom's work that he's, he's beautiful on the inside too. So I am a super fan. His work is, it, you know, he's always asked me, do you think I have another good piece of me? And the truth of the matter is that he never fails to come up with something new, unique and beautiful time and time again. So he's recently started working in bronze and his bronze is so fabulous that his first piece of work is actually on the cover of Spotlight magazine in the UK that's coming out in a couple of weeks from now. So I think that I'm not the only super fan. So thanks for asking. And thank uh, you. yep, thank you. Thank you. I am delighted to introduce you to the Norwegian artist Torhild Freudus Eid. Torhild uh, hails from Norway, and it, she does beautiful celestial abstract landscape work which really rhapsodizes about the natural terrain about the topography of the world they are celestial her colors are blues and turquoises and they rejoice in the beauty of our world and you can see that there are no uh, human beings in it she just concentrates on her co-relationship with mother nature rejoicing in the beauty of the land Torhild Freudus Eid. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is celebrating the Queen of Flowers in her royal floral kingdom, Nancy Balmert. Nancy is known as the Floral Queen. She's also the Yellow Rose of Texas. Nancy's work is renowned for her uh, beautiful, softly blended colors. Her oil paintings have the rich textures, and she uh, renders her work in the old master style with, uh, with beautiful celestial tones, with colorations, with utopian hues. It's really an immersive experience. We inhale the art and the beauty of the realm, and we exhale the joy with Nancy Balmert. 
Nancy exhibits internationally. She's going to be exhibiting very soon in Paris. She exhibits in Italy, in, um, in Belgium, in Great Britain. And her, world, her work is rejoiced by collectors internationally, and she's collected in national collections as well here in the United States. Thank you to Nancy Baumert, who makes the world happier as we inhale her beauty. Nancy Baumert, the Yellow Rose of Texas. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the works of Sally Ruddy, a California artist who's California dreaming. Sally has a continuing series entitled Fleeting Moments, where she touches on the transitory, private, quiet moments of life that we treasure, that are pensive, that are beautiful for us to rejoice in the beauty of the realm. Sally Ruddy's first work here is entitled Pensive. It's her beautiful granddaughter. And then Sally is enjoying a cup of coffee or tea, uh, or tea. These are private moments. These are fleeting moments. These are the quiet moments when we are taught to look for the roses. We are taught to inhale the joy of life, to be still, to be quiet. Sally has oil, um, uh, oil and canvas artwork. Sally has been with Amsterdam Whitney Gallery since 2003, and this is our 20th anniversary, so she's been here for 19 years. Sally's work is treasured in international collections. Sally's in, uh, exhibited at the London Biennale, as well as the Chelsea Biennale. She's exhibited in France and Italy. Her work is treasured on the West Coast and is widely acclaimed on the East Coast. Sally Ruddy. Well, that's all the time we have for this show, folks. We've been at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery 20 years. Now tell me, how do, you, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it going? Because I have fabulous artists and fabulous people like you, Crystal, to support the gallery. But it's the artists who invigorate the gallery and give the gallery love and light and joy. And there's so much happiness in this environment. It's aesthetic, it's joyful, and it's celestial love that's here. And we thank Crystal Hart for celebrating the Chelsea Biennale and all of our acclaimed, award-winning artists. And once again, we thank Crystal Hart, the star of Chelsea, the queen of the film and art world. And we love you all. God bless you. Be well. And thank you, Irene, for coming from Florida. Yes. Come, come in. Come oh, in. OK. OK. Eleventh Avenue between Chelsea. Chelsea, 25 to 24th Street. Thank you all. Come and visit. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.